some of my coaches are saying that it's important to do neck strengthening exercises to prevent concussions. What is your opinion on the usefulness of neck strengthening exercises for concussion prevention? And has there been any research done to support either opinion? So neck strengthening, the idea behind neck strengthening or having a strong neck is because concussion is due to acceleration or deceleration. So theoretically, if the neck is stiffer, as you get hit, uh, it doesn't cause as much of a whipping motion of the head back and forth and the brain moving inside of the skull is what causes concussion. For those of you that are following me on Instagram at concussion underscore doc, you'll see that the post I did today was actually talking about the mechanism of injury for concussion being more of a stretching and shearing of neurons or axons within the brain as opposed to the coup contra coup injury, which was thought to be the brain smashing up against the inside of the skull. Either way, the mechanism of concussion comes from acceleration, deceleration of the brain inside the skull. And the reason that happens is through a whipping motion. So if you get hit in the head and your head whips back and forth uh, to a significant enough degree at a high enough acceleration, those brain cells will start to kind of stretch and shear apart. And so uh, a few years ago, researchers started hypothesizing that if you were to increase the stiffness of the neck, there wouldn't be as much whipping motion of the head back and forth. So if you are a fighter and you're able to hold your neck in a stiff way and a hit to the head happens and you can keep your neck stiff, well, as long as that head doesn't whip back and forth, there should be no acceleration, deceleration of the brain and therefore no concussion injury. Theoretically, this makes sense. However, you can't just look at it in terms of strength because strength does not equal stiffness. Stiffness is strength, plus you need to have awareness that the hit is coming. So you need to be able to, to anticipate that you're gonna get hit. Just having a strong neck, I mean, if you don't think that NFL players have strong necks, uh, you are definitely mistaken in that regard. And NFL get, players get concussions all the time. So it's not necessarily the strength of your neck, but it's, are you aware that the impact is going to occur? A few years ago, there was some research done by, um, uh, a research by the name of Viano. And what they did is built a, um, um, a model using machine learning type algorithms. And they built this um, kind of predictive model. And they looked at, and they broke down NFL impacts that resulted in concussion. And what they found was the person who was getting hit was much more likely to get a concussion than the person doing the hitting. And the theory was that the person doing the hitting is aware that they're going to make contact. And so they stiffen themselves up, they get prepared for the impact. The person who gets concussed is often unaware that the impact is going to occur. Therefore, if you're a receiver looking over your shoulder and you get hit, your head is not and get your neck is not engaged. And so uh, what they found was peak acceleration of the head happened in the first six to 20 milliseconds of contact. If you look at the research around uh, concussion, you find that, or sorry, if you, if you look at the research around neck stiffness and neck strength, it takes between 150 to 300 milliseconds to even initiate contraction of the muscles in your neck. It takes another 150 milliseconds to get to half of that contractile strength. So you're up now to close to half a second and you haven't even reached half of the contractile strength of the muscles in your neck. So neck strength can be important, but really the variable you're considering here is neck stiffness. You need to have neck strength, but you also need to have game awareness enough that you can contract your neck in time for before that impact occurs. So if you're a fighter and you can keep your neck stiff throughout that fight, I think that's going to serve as a protective mechanism for you. If you're playing a more dynamic sport when you could get hit from all angles and you're not sure when that hit's going to come from, and you have to keep your neck loose to understand where that hit may come from. You're not going to be able to tighten up in time uh, if you're not aware that that hit is going to come. And you need at least probably about a second of um, leeway in order to contract your neck quick enough 
for the strength of your neck to actually make any type of difference whatsoever. So for those dynamic sports, I tend to preach more of a game awareness um, and kind of a neuromuscular facilitation, being able to you know work on contracting quickly more so than the, the ultimate just strength of your neck. Uh, for fighters, I tend to work on more endurance, being able to keep your neck stiff throughout uh, a bout. I think that is more important. So um, in terms of exercises, I mean, you can go in any way, but uh, for you as a fighter, uh, I would work on more endurance type exercises, being able to hold your neck stiff for long periods of time, uh, potentially either.